Euclid's Elements, Book 2, Proposition 9. If a straight line be cut into equal and unequal segments, the squares on each of the unequal segments will be equal to twice the square on the half plus twice the square on the straight line between the points of section. We've got our straight line, AB. We'll cut it equally at... C, and we'll cut it unequally at D. And what we want to show is that the square on the the square on each of the unequal segments, that is the square on AD plus the square on DB, is equal to twice twice the square on AC, so that's the half, plus twice the square on the line between the points of section. So that would be twice the square on CD. We start off using book 11, and we draw a line from C perpendicular to AB. So AC Sorry, we'll call it, we'll call this E. EC is perpendicular to AB. And then the same step because we're talking about the same straight line. We also use prop three from book one to make EC equal to either AC or CD. And then we join E to A, and we'll join E to B, and then using Proposition 31, we draw a line from D parallel to EC. We'll call that F, and then we draw another line from F that's parallel, we'll call that G, that's parallel to AB. FD, as I said, is parallel to EC, and GF is parallel to AB. And he also connects line A to F. Okay, so we're going to look at the triangle ACE, and we know that since AC equals EC, that means from Proposition 5, since AC equals EC, according to Proposition 5, the angle CAE is equal to the angle AEC. But because the angle ACE is a right angle here, then we know that because of Prop 32, that these two angles must be equal to one right angle. So by proposition 32, they are equal to one right angle, which means that because they're equal and they both add up to one right angle, each of them is equal to half of a right. The angle CAE equals one half a right angle and angle AEC equals one half a right angle, which now we can apply proposition six and we can say that since the base, well actually that's another step, different triangles. Now we go on to the next triangle on the right hand side. We've got EC equal to CB, so we can do the same thing. We can say that the angle at B is going to, by proposition 32, the angle at B is half of a right was one half of a right angle. Likewise, the angle CEB is one half of a right. Step seven. And 
now we can go and look back at, we can look at this triangle here, EGF, and we know that this angle, mark it in red, we know that that angle, C, CEB, is half a right angle, but we know that the angle EGF has to be a right angle, and he says that's because of Proposition 29. We've got, we've got the parallel lines GF and CD cut by the transversal EC, so the red angle here, the red right angle, is equal to the angle GCD. So the angle EGF equals a right angle. And step eight, since it's a right angle, and we know that this is half of a right angle, this being GEF, then the angle EFG has to be half of a right angle. I can mark this in, in red. Therefore, EFG equals one half of a right angle. Step nine. We can do basically apply the same. Well, actually, before we move on, we can now apply Proposition Six, since the base. If we look at triangle EGF, we see the base angles are equal. Therefore, the sides that subtend those angles must also be equal. Therefore, EG equals GF, and that is by Proposition Six of Book One. And then we use the same steps using Prop Twenty Nine. And prop six, we're going to apply this to triangle FDB. We know that, as we showed earlier, the angle at B, the angle at B was equal to half of a right angle down here. And we know that FDB, by proposition 29, is going to be equal to the corresponding angle, namely GCB. Therefore, the angle FDB is right. And since the angle at B was equal to half of a right, then the angle FDB, sorry, DFB, is also half a right angle. DFB equals one half a right angle. And then we apply Proposition 6 again. Since the base angles are equal, then the sides which subtend them must be equal. Therefore, FD, side FD is equal to the side, equal to the side DB. Step 13. I'm going to go back and look at this triangle AEC. And what we can see is that well, AC and CE are equal to each other, and therefore the squares on them will be equal. Square AC equals the square EC. So we take any two of them, and we take two of them, and they'll be double the other one. Therefore, we can say that square on AC plus the square on EC are twice the square on AC. But we know that from the Pythagorean theorem, Prop 47, that the square on EA is equal to the square on CA plus the square on EC. Therefore, the square on EA must also be, since it's equal to these two squares, it must also be equal to twice AC. Therefore, we can say that EA squared equals twice AC. Because, I'll say it again, because EA is equal to the squares on either of these two sides.
Now we can look at this triangle here, EGF, and we can do the same, much the same thing. We say, look at EG is equal to FG, therefore the square on EG is equal to the square on GF. The square on EG equals the square on GF. But if we take those two together, like we did over here, it'll be double, it'll be double one of them. So Euclid says, let's take, it says, therefore, if we took EG squared and we uh, added GF squared to it, they both would be double GF. Step 16. Okay. But the squares on EG using proposition 47 applied to the triangle EGF. We know that the square on EG plus the square on GF is equal to the square on EF. So E, I'll write this one up. EF squared equals EG squared plus GF squared. So, since these two added together equal twice GF, that means that EF squared, by common notion number one, EF squared is equal to twice, twice the square on GF. Now, I'll just put this in right now. We know that GF is equal to CD, so then we can replace GF squared here with twice CD. So I'll just write this beneath. So F, EF squared equals twice CD. All right. We're going to go back and we're going to look at triangle AEF. Now we had seen, we saw that this angle right here, not the whole angle, the angles uh, uh, EA, actually yeah, the whole angle, and this whole angle here, they're each, each of them are equal to half of a right angle. So, that, and since these were also half rights, all these single arcs are equal, then the whole angle AEB is a, is a right angle. Which means that we can, that triangle AEF is a right triangle. Which means we can say that from Prop 47, that EA squared, square on EA plus the square on EF is equal to the square on AF. But we know that the square on EA, where do we do this? The square on EA is equal to twice AC. And the square on EF is equal to the square on twice, so twice the square on CD. And we can apply Prop 47 again. I'll just put AF here. Step 20, I'm going to rewrite this side of the equation. So we've got twice AC plus twice the square on CD equals, we can apply proposition 47 to the, to the right triangle, A, D, F. We know that this angle, A, D, F, has to be right because its adjacent angle is right. And the two of them together have to equal two right angles. So now we can replace A, F squared with AD squared and DF squared. So we can say AD squared plus FD squared. And I'll get really pedantic and rewrite this just for hopefully for clarity. So now we've got twice AC plus twice the square on CD 
equals the square on AD plus the square on FD, but by the step, where did I equate those two lines? Uh, I equate, I got FD equal to DB because of proposition six. So we can replace FD with DB plus the square on DB. But this line right here is this line right here. So we've got twice the square on the half, that's AC, plus twice the square on the line uh, between the points of section equal to the square on one of the unequal segments plus the square on the other unequal segment, which is what we're trying to prove. QED.